Okay, we got 0.436 negative. That's my velocity. Negative 0.436. Okay. Acceleration is the rate or the amount by which the velocity is going to change. Acceleration is 0.133 negative. So right here plus negative 0.133. Okay, please notice the units. Look. This problem doesn't have any units, but if I put some units on the problem, it makes it a little, little easier to talk about. So I'll just make up some units and call these meters per second. That means these are meters per second per second. Can you one or two of the units make sense to you? One or two of the units make complete sense. One or two of the units make complete sense. I'm trying to get you to memorize that acceleration tells you how the velocity changes. So a little hint because I had a few twos. This is saying that if the acceleration remains constant at this value and one second of time goes by, the velocity will be 0.133 meters per second more negative than the velocity currently is. That's what that means. Sir, please. For the units on negative 1.33, can you put meters per second squared? Yes. Meters per second squared means exactly the same thing. Okay. So once again, this is telling you that your velocity is going to be this much more negative one second from now. That's what acceleration means. If you want it to, that makes perfect sense. So one second from now, the velocity is going to be 0.133 more negative than the velocity is right now. So points for the room on that one. Um, the trouble is this, hey, in pretty much every problem we work in this class, nothing remains constant. Calculus is about studying things that are always changing, they're never constant. So really, the acceleration will not stay at this value for one second. But it doesn't really matter. Because let's say the velocity, let's say that, that it stays at this value for just a tiny fraction of time like this, watch. We got 0.436, that's my velocity. So let's see, at time two, the velocity is negative 0.436 meters per second. Let's say we want to go find the velocity at time equal 2.001. That's a thousandth of a second later. Okay, that's not much time later, but it's just a little tiny bit of time later. What we would do, it's just an approximation, note the squiggly. We take the <laughs> current velocity and we say, okay, acceleration tells me how velocity is going to change. So that was more funny than anticipated. Um, so let's say I take 0.133 meters per second every second, but a whole second of time is not elapsing. So I simply multiply this by the tiny amount of time that does elapse. So I'd be like 0 0.001 seconds. Okay, please sort. Isn't that 0 0.133 negative? Ah, thank you. My mistake. Three for sort. Ooh. Look, hey, watch. I want one or two if it makes sense to you that if this is the amount that the velocity would change in one second, if I want to see how much the velocity is going to change in a thousandth of a second, I just multiply the rate by a thousandth of a second. I mean, one or two of that makes perfect sense. I'm just going to multiply that rate by a thousandth of a second. That will tell me how much the velocity actually changes in that thousandth of a second. Two points for the room. Okay, so then I get this. The new velocity is approximately negative 0.436 meters per second. Uh, multiplied by a thousand means the decimal is going to move three places. So it becomes negative point uh, zero, one, so zero, zero, one, three, three meters per second. The seconds divide out. So this is the amount by which the velocity will become more negative because of the acceleration even though only a thousandth of a second elapsed. 
we're, we're not adding these, but that's going to affect the velocity. So we're going to make it more negative. And one or two of what's on the board makes sense to you. It doesn't show any sort of thing. Wouldn't it be doing less negative or The difference is that we have some negative velocity already. We're adding that a very tiny negative value. So it causes this to become more negative. It's still in play. Talk to me. You're okay. So of something just gets stuck and you're not sure why. Um, think of it this way, those easier numbers. If you had like negative four, you're gonna add to that negative two, what's the result? So did the value negative four become more negative or less negative? More negative. So because the acceleration is also negative, the effect that it has on the velocity is to cause a velocity that is already negative to become even more negative. Because acceleration simply is telling you how the velocity is changing. Let that sit for a second, but three tickets for a good question. Ellie? Uh, I feel like this might be like a stupid question. No, it's not. But, uh, mm -hmm. So the velocity is constant, right? No, uh, three tickets for a good question. Everyone looks at everyone here this one. Hey, uh, what you're remembering is some sort of simplified example from a previous class. For our class, that doesn't apply at all. Acceleration could be anything, velocity could be anything. Okay, I'm just kind of confused on how they connect. Like, velocity and acceleration is like the movement of the object. Like, when uh, not quite. But I'm, I'm just kind of confused You're good. how they go together. You're good. Everyone look at me. Everyone look at me. Okay, it really is quite simple, but I just want to keep saying it in different ways until it really clicks. Um, the okay, when we talk about particle motion, we're talking about position. Go back, ready? We're talking about position, velocity, and acceleration. Okay, the position value only tells you where the particle is. That's it. Just where the particle is. So look at me. Find the particle, and this is the origin. Look at me. And I, if I have a positive position, where am I? Just say it. I'm over here somewhere. Yeah. That's all the position tells you is where I am. It does not tell you how I'm moving. Just where I am. If I have a negative position, I'm over here somewhere. But that's all you know. You don't know anything about how I'm moving at all. Okay, velocity. You've got to get this memorized. Velocity is the rate at which position changes. Let's write that down. Look. Um, new sheet here. It's Danica's chart. You've had it before. No, this one's Danica's. Sorry. Um, you got to move fast because Ava Curtis is pretty excited about getting her picture on the wall. And she's going to call it Ava's Advice. Uh -huh. Just have a little picture of pointing and stuff. So she's working on that already. So first one gets it on the wall. What Sarah. Is <laughs> uh, um, you you. Can you so, shh, 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 shh. Quiet. Go, so the, uh, I'm just wondering if I got this right. The equation that you're given on here, like just the equation, that's the position. And then velocity is how much that is changing, and then acceleration is how much velocity is changing. So it's kind of like. Yeah, it's perfect. It's exactly what it's going to drop, three tickets. So the only exception is, Sarah, the equation they gave you in the problem, I believe, is the velocity. Yeah, but yeah, but like if you're it is. You're good. You're good. So you have position. One second, Ellie. So you have position. You take, look at me, come on. You take the derivative of position, you're finding the rate that the position changes. Okay, the rate at which the position changes. That's why velocity values, here's an example. It was negative 0.436 on the last problem. Is that correct? The units of that number are meters per second. Meaning the position will be different by 0.4 meters every second. So when the particle, it doesn't tell me where I'm at. I could be right here in a positive position. That has nothing to do with the velocity being negative. But if the velocity is negative, just say it out loud. Which way am I moving? Louder. 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 And at what rate does my position move to the left? I go this many meters every second. One or two of that make perfect sense. That's what velocity means. 
please, I, I say it all year long. You cannot just memorize things. You've got to memorize the meaning. So that's the meaning of velocity. Two points for the room. Ellie, you had a question, sorry. Yeah. How do you know when the velocity or the rate is a constant rate or it changes? Got you. Got you. Everyone listen. Hey. For our class, the values of velocity, position, and acceleration will almost always not be constant. Um, there'll almost always be some sort of formula that is different for different values of t. So that's how you know. Like, if you look at the formula they gave for velocity right here, the formula is a function of time. I Meaning if you plug in different values of t, you get different values of velocity. So the velocity is not the same. Constant means the same, unchanging. It's always something different. Now, if they had given you a question of LED, where they had said, it's not very common, but it can happen. And they say V of T is just always negative five meters per second, and there's no T inside that equation. That means it doesn't matter what T is, the velocity won't change. That's a constant velocity. Okay. The same would be true for acceleration. If there's no T in the equation for velocity or acceleration, then you have a velocity or acceleration that is unchanging, constant. Three tickets. So here we go, look, the velocity is this value, okay? But that's not really V of T in this problem, that was V of two, correct? Because the velocity really isn't constant, so let's fix that. So this is really V of two. I just said that if this is the velocity, that is saying that wherever the particle is, the particle's going left, and every time one second goes by, that position of the particle is going to change by about a half a meter, like that much. Notice I move about a half a meter. That's how much the particle's position will change by. In reality, that's not what happens. But the velocity <coughs> isn't constant. It's always changing. That's why if we really want to find out how much the position changes, we've got to do an integral. So we've learned this, that the integral from, say, 0 to 4 of the velocity that integral will give you the total change in position for those four seconds. Like in total, how much did the particle's position change by? What, what, how much different is the new position than the old position? That's what this is giving you, change in position. Question. Okay, one thing I want everyone to catch on to real quick. So look at Danica's chart. You have a position and you find a derivative. That means you're going to the right on Danica's chart. You're finding a rate. Uh, that kind of fits. I never thought of that. As you go to the right, you're finding a rate. Okay, on Danica's chart, you go to the right, you're finding a rate. You're taking a derivative. That's why velocity is the rate at which position changes. If you go to the right again, you have the second derivative of position, which means you're finding the rate at which velocity changes. Uh, say it out loud. What's the word that means the rate at which velocity changes? Acceleration. Acceleration. Questions? Cool. There's a pattern here. Position is related to velocity in exactly the same way that velocity is related to acceleration. So if I integrate the velocity and end up finding the change in position, because I'm integrating the rate, it rhymes. Integrate the rate. If I'm integrating the rate at which position changes, I find the change in position. Hands up, okay, everyone who knows. If you integrate acceleration, you're integrating the rate at which the velocity is changing. So you're going to be finding like, what will the integral be computing? Hands, come on. A lot of people see the pattern. What will the integral be computing for us, Heidi? Change in velocity. Change in velocity. I'm going to that for she said. Question. Okay, so back here again. Look. We knew the velocity of time two is this number. The acceleration simply indicates how the velocity will be changed over time. Um, 
we took the existing velocity, and we said, let's go figure out how much the acceleration is going to affect the velocity in a tiny amount of time, 0 0.001 seconds. The effect was this amount. Still a negative value. So it caused the acceleration, sorry, caused the velocity to become more negative. So just say it out loud. The part was still going to the lab. But is it going faster to the left or slower? Louder. Faster. 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 Because the velocity is becoming more negative. And I think last time we gave you the pattern for Chad's chart, right? That if the signs are the same, velocity starts at the same sign, particle speeds up, otherwise particle slows down. Sir, please. So there's no way to make it. If it was negative, there's no way to make it. Uh, no. If the velocity is negative, and the acceleration were actually a positive value. Right, that's what I meant. Oh, I'm sorry. If the, if the acceleration, if, like if there's the same signs, there's no number for the acceleration. Perfect. Watch this. Watch really closely, sir. This is really good. Um, so, yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to illustrate. You're doing perfect. Three ticket. If the velocity is already negative, Sarah, it doesn't matter how tiny of a negative value we add to the velocity, it's going to force it to be more negative. So no matter how short of a time period we examine, if the acceleration is negative, you're still going to be adding some tiny negative value, causing the velocity to become more negative. Perfect. Chip. Okay. So I just have to make sure that I have this right. So when acceleration is negative, it just means it's accelerating to the left. It all depends on the velocity. You get, no, then listen okay. close. Listen, listen. Hey, look at me. Look at me. Okay, once again, on the particle, look, and I have a oh, negative yeah. position. All you know is I'm over here. Yes. You have no idea how I move it. Got it? If I'm a particle and I have a negative velocity, you don't know where I am, okay. but you know which way I'm going. Which way am I going? Say it. Uh, Left. If I'm a particle and I have a negative acceleration, this freaks people out, but you don't know which way I'm going. Only the velocity, you've got to get this memorized, only the velocity tells you which way you're going. The negative acceleration chance tells you how the velocity will be changing. Crucially, you've got to get that like, permanently in your head. Yes. So the summary is this, Lindsay. You're talking about position. The positive or negative only tells you where you are. So positive position means I'm on the right somewhere. Negative position means I'm on the left somewhere. That's all you know. You don't know how you're moving. Good chance to get that written down. So position sign only tells you where you are, not how fast you're moving, not where you're moving, anything. Just where you are. So problems like these are kind of random, but will they only deal at exactly equal to? Because like, if the acceleration was like in that positive, eventually it would be like speeding up but at that instant. Yeah, it all takes time, but you're correct. What Chad is saying is what if we had a negative velocity, meaning the particle is moving to the left. Yeah. So we had a positive acceleration. Uh, that positive acceleration would cause the velocity to become less negative. For the particle, would, yeah, for some amount of time. The particle is going to the left. The velocity is becoming less negative, so Chad, the particle is slowing. Yeah. You're right. Over time, the particle will eventually stop. Uh -huh. And then if the acceleration is still a positive value, it'll cause the velocity now to become more and more positive, causing it to speed up as it goes to the left. Yeah, right. So the problems we've investigated so far are only taking place, they're only asking about a moment in time. Will they, be, will they start asking about, like? I, they've never, oops, sorry. I can tell you what that was your book. They have never asked that before. Okay. Does that mean they won't in the future? I don't know, but they really haven't before. Chen. So the speed, okay. So the speed increasing, well, the increase in speed, if they're both negative, the speed is increasing because if you multiply them, it's gonna be a positive value and indicating that the speed is increasing. Well, that's kind of the trick. That's kind of the trick. But what really happens is this chance. The velocity is negative, so you tell me, which way is the particle moving? To the left. Yeah. The acceleration tells you how the velocity will be changing. So it's saying, hey, the velocity is going to be getting more negative because the acceleration is a negative number. So if the velocity gets more negative, will the particle still go left or go right? So go left. But as it gets more and more negative, it's going faster and faster to the left. 
So they really aren't multiplying anything. That's just a trick to kind of remember it. Okay. The velocity is already negative. The acceleration is going to make the velocity more negative. The particle will speed up in the negative direction. The speed is increasing. Everyone look up. Come on. Hey. The speed is increasing. Sounds kind of funny, but the velocity is actually decreasing. Because the velocity is becoming more negative. So as the particle goes to the left, the velocity gets more and more negative, meaning the velocity is mathematically decreasing. But is the particle speeding up? Absolutely. The speed is just the magnitude of the velocity. We don't care about the sign. And the speed is always the absolute value. The absolute value. Speed is the absolute value of the velocity, always. You've hammered this one pretty hard. Um, any other question? Okay, good. Back on the problem here, look. Okay, if you want all six or nine points on the test, you must tell the grader what the velocity is at time two. You must tell the grader what the acceleration is at time two. And then you must have the appropriate concluding statement. So since velocity is negative, the acceleration is also negative, the particle is speeding up. Particle is speeding up. Again, please remember, the sign of the acceleration tells you nothing about the direction. Can you just say increasing because acceleration uh, That's perfect. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I've seen, Heidi, is this. Uh, people will take the test they'll think through the problem, okay? Like they'll actually find out that the velocity is negative and that the acceleration is negative. They'll write this down, look at me. They won't write the stuff in green. They'll only get three of the six points. Everyone hear that? If you write the blue, look at me. This is how the AP test is graded. This is not my rule, this is the AP test rule. Um, if you write the stuff in blue but you don't write the stuff in green, you'll get three of the six points. That's how the test is graded. Because what they're doing, Chad, they are not going to give any points for guessing. So someone could just guess this and hope they're right. You've got to have evidence that you didn't guess. Here's your evidence that you didn't guess. You actually found those numbers. Yeah. Any other questions here? Please, Sydney. You have to say that like, if it's increasing speed, or is it the same? Oh, great question. Hey. Um, so Sydney came in at the semester, so you missed, no big deal, you missed my standard joke, um, which is on the AP test you can't use, you've got to be very specific. So the very first of the year I joked a lot that this is considered to be a, these, these are inappropriate words for this class, because it's not specific. Um, you can't say the graph, the function, those generic terms. You have to be specific. So if you don't say the speed is increasing, they might give it to you because the question asked about speed. But I wouldn't take a chance. Like just learn to always be specific. Anyone else? Awesome. Did anyone else bring a question within the class? Ellie. Um, I think we could like when you look at the graph, it goes up and down. No. I'll look up. Okay, problem three, this is the graph. If you put it on your calculator, this is the okay? But this is the graph of the velocity. So right here, the value of the velocity is zero. We just talked about that. If the velocity is zero, one person raise your hand and tell the class. If the velocity is zero, do you know where the particle is? Say it louder. No. The velocity is zero. All you know is the particle stopped. You have no idea where the particle is located. If we like have the equation for the velocity, could you find where it is? We can actually find where the particle is at any moment in time. Oh yeah. Yes. Here's how we do it. Watch, 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 watch. Um, first, a couple of review things. Uh, I want a one or a two on this one. Like, does it make sense? Does it not make sense? You remember from last week that we talked about this is a graph of velocity. 
If I integrate velocity, I get change in position, one or two. If I integrate velocity, I get change in position. Okay. We also talked about how if you integrate velocity, you find this area right here. And so that area represents change in position, one or two. That area represents change in position of the particle. Two points for the room. Okay. A moment ago, I said that if this was a graph of acceleration, and you integrated acceleration, you get change in velocity, one or two if that makes sense. One or two if that makes sense. If you integrate acceleration, you get change in velocity. Therefore, this area would then represent the change in the velocity, one or two. Two points for the have question so far. If it was a graph of acceleration, then Yeah, perfect, Ellen. If this was a graph of acceleration, then when you integrate that acceleration, you're finding two things. You're finding this area, but that area is representing the change in the velocity. Perfect. Here we go. For this problem, it really is velocity that they're talking about. And the situation looks like this. You have a particle moving horizontally. Okay. Here's the origin. Origin means location zero. It does not mean the beginning location of the particle, necessarily. In this problem it is because they tell you, uh, let's see, at time equals zero, the particle is at the origin, so it's right here. Just say it out loud. From time zero, this turns out to be time pi. You can use your calculator to find out. Time zero to time pi. Just say it out loud. Does the particle move left, right, or both? Right. Louder. Right. right. Only right because the velocity is only positive during that time. So this area represents how much the particle moves to the right. Question. Okay, during the next time period, pi to two pi, is the particle moving left, right, or both? Right. Louder. Right. Louder. Yeah. Left. 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 left only because the velocity is only negative during that time. So this area would represent how much the particle moved to the left. One or two, if that makes perfect sense. It doesn't show me two. I don't know what that is. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes, <laughs> yeah, man. Yes, yeah. Uh, two points for the room. Okay, just say it out loud. Is this area here, look at it, look at the board, come on. Is this area here more or less than the area here? More. 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 Particle move more right or more left? More. more right. So in my picture, I can do this. I can say the particle goes right some amount. I haven't calculated it yet. Comes back left, not as much. Or two, if that makes sense. Points of the room. Um, that process repeats. So the particle goes right again. Back left. Just say yes or no. Will the particle ever get back to the origin? No. 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 You don't have a question about that. Okay. For your homework, writing up a solution to justify your answer can get a little bit tedious. Like it could be a lot of work. So if you haven't really finished this problem, I wouldn't worry about it. The thing, the reason I put it on the homework is I want to make sure we can talk about this idea of going right and left, and more right than left. If conceptually it makes sense, I think you're good enough for today. So don't worry about anything else right now. Chip. Uh, I just got to ask you for the, to justify your answer, could I possibly write the change, well, I don't know how to say this, but the change in position to the right minus the change in the position to the left is greater than zero? It's something like that. It's a bit, okay. it's a bit of work to really get enough things written down to make sure you really convince the grader that you know what's happening. So we don't really have time to do that. So you're on the right track. It's okay. good enough for now. It's okay. good enough for now. Three, two. Okay. Next thing. Pick up the blue packet. Turn to problem. The second blue packet unit. Turn to problem four. Get those formulas in your calculator. I'm ahead of you because I've last period. Turn to problem four. Get those formulas entered in your computer, in your calculator. It is definitely a small made up computer.
Okay, if you can raise your hand in a moment and show me the picture I'm about to show you, um, I'll give you two tickets. So the picture I want, let's see, they say go from zero to 12. Zero fits. It looks like this one. I'm going to pay you two tickets. Just, you don't have to raise your hand high. Just kind of start signaling once you have it. Wait a minute for everybody else. Uh, the problem tells you what the window's supposed to be. So I just always look at the problem. And it's so here's my graph. Everybody else to catch up quick. Two has it so far. Show me that. Show me that. Two has it. Two has it. That's also good. Two points if your hand is raised. Do you need help? Awesome. Okay. The good news is this. Uh, eyes on me. Eyes on me. Eyes up. Eyes up. Look up for a second, Lexi. Eyes on me. Eyes on me. Okay. The good news is this. The problems in this packet, like the homework tonight, is the blue packet. So every problem in the blue packet is the homework. But the problems are really common sense. Like, just, just use kind of your just common sense language, and it really isn't that hard to get through the problems. For example, this one describes a tank of oil. Uh, they say the tank has 125 gallons to start with. And then they give you two rates. Uh, one rate is the rate at which oil flows into the tank. The other rate is the rate at which oil flows out. And as everything in calculus, those rates are not constants, they're varying. So here's the graph. So initially, look at it. The rate at which oil flows in is very high. The rate at which oil flows out is zero. Then as time goes on, the rate at which oil flows in is dropping. The rate at which oil goes out is going up. So the level of the tank's gonna be rising and falling, going up and down. Question. Okay, first question says, how many gallons of oil are pumped in uh, make sure you read very carefully. They're only talking about the oil that gets pumped in. So part A, you're not really concerned at all about the oil that gets pumped out. Okay, we are using what's called the fundamental theorem of calculus. I know I've used that word in class, and it goes back to the same thing we've been talking about. If we integrate the rate, that's the rhyme, integrate the rate at which velocity is changing, you find out how much the velocity changed means if you integrate acceleration, you get the change in velocity. Um, if you integrate the rate at which position is changing, you find out how much the position changed. That's why when we integrate velocity, we find out the change in the position. Same thing applies to other rates. So listen to the rhyme. If I integrate the rate at which oil is flowing into a tank, I'm going to find out how much oil flowed into the tank. You want to if that feels good to you. If I integrate the rate at which oil flows into a tank, I can find out how much oil flowed into the tank. Um, two points for the roof. The reason that works is this. Look, let's just pretend we're going to use easy numbers to make sure the idea makes sense. So one person will pay you three tickets. You raise your hand. You give me a nice, easy number of like a rate of so many gallons per hour of oil flowing into a tank. I don't care. Just any number type. Five. Five. So if the rate of oil flowing in happened to be five gallons per hour, Ty's going to keep helping me here, five gallons per hour. And all you did is you said, hey, if that's the rate that oil flows in and it never changes, Ty, if we want to know how much oil had flowed in after 10 hours, what mathematical operation would we perform to this to calculate the total amount of oil that flowed in in 10 hours? And we multiply by what? Ten. Ten what units? Hours. The units here would divide out. The result would be that after 10 hours, 50 gallons of oil would have flowed into the tank. Three tickets were tied. Show me one or two if that makes perfect sense. One or two if that makes perfect sense. 
points for the room. Okay, the only difference in our problem is this. The rate is not constant, it's changing. So instead of just taking a rate times a big long time period, we just take the rate, h of t, and multiply it by a tiny time period to find out how much oil flowed in in one tiny amount of time. And we just do it again and again and again and again and again. We add them all up, we can find out the total amount of oil that flowed into the tank during the time period of interest. In this case, zero to 12. One or two of what I just said about the blue makes perfect sense. One or two of what I just said about the blue makes perfect sense. It's no different than what we've been doing. We're just applying it to a different rate this time. So two more tickets for the room. So on your test, that's all you do. You just write down the easy problem. Let's see, I'm doing an integral, so I must write the integral to get the points. So you write on your paper, 0 to 12. They already told me the symbol h of t, so I just write that. I pick up my calculator and do the computation. Go here. Pull that up. Let's see, go back to the main screen. Uh, let's see, I can't remember. H is in Y1. So I'll go back to here. Turn that off. Math 9. 0 to 12. Alpha trace. Choose Y1. X, press enter. Write down the values and it comes back. 70.571. Do we need help getting to there? I'd be glad to help if it's not working. Oh, please, go. So, for position, it can give you like H and T, R and T, or no, obviously, it'll always be 12. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, superb question. Three tickets. When they're talking about the rates of different things, like some examples are rates of oil flowing into a tank, rate of oil leaving a tank. Uh, I've seen there's a problem in the blue packet, the rate at which mosquitoes change on an island. Uh, they'll come up with whatever symbols they want, and they'll just tell you the symbol. Velocity, I've never seen them use anything but E. Acceleration, I've never seen them use anything but A. For position, I've seen them use X of T, Y of T, H of T, S of T. So they tell you, it's not a big piece of weight about this. Again, if you're going to be taking an FRQ test in two weeks, you want to make sure you get all the points. Uh, with what's on the board right now, you won't get all the points. What's missing? Yes. Yeah, this is why you got to practice this. You got to make sure. It's just the rules of the game. Just the rules of the game. No, you can write gallons. You know, the period's gone. It doesn't matter. So even though there's not gallons like in the answer, you just put it because it's in the question? The reason I did that is this. Hey, quiet. Paris, help me. Um, what are the units of the H of T? Gallons per hour. Gallons per hour. Uh, what would be the units of DT? Hours. Hours, because it's a change in time. So gallons per hour multiplied by hours results in what unit? Gallons. Gallons. Okay. The reason I'm telling you this is some AP problems, the scoring guide will not say that you get points for the units. But some AP problems, it does. So just points. It just always included. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. Everybody else, three for parents. Please don't. Will they dock you if you put units, like units, like units, of, um, that doesn't have units? I'm afraid they would, so don't do that either. Just pay attention to the units. If there are units, just include them. It's simply a simple habit to develop. Pretty so, else? Awesome. Any questions on A? That's all you have to write. Um, if you look at the scoring guide, Braden, so this is how your test will be scored in two weeks. This was problem number four. Uh, it's worth two points. And as uh, Paris said, they didn't actually give units on this one. But they gave one point if you had the correct integral. So if you had simply written down the decimal value without the integral, you'd only get half credit. So on my test out of 100 points, that means you get three out of six. Right. Um, questions? Oh, please. Go. So this isn't with that problem, just with the like, scoring guidelines. When it says, like, handles change of direction at certain points, like, what do you have to do? 
Um, you have so much problem here. So this is just on the green paper sign. You're fine. No, I want you to ask about the square guys, so you're going to just find It's like on number two. Gotcha. Is that like Hey, look out, please. Everybody. Okay, for the, this channel, this handle's change of direction. That's a way of then giving some partial credit if everything else isn't right. Um, I can guarantee you on the test you take in two weeks, as well as the AP test, if they ask for the total distance traveled, and you show this integral, with the absolute value of B, 0 to 4, and your decimal is correct, you'll get full credit. So this one's a little confusing as to what they're saying, don't worry about it. Yeah, if you have the integral shown with the absolute value, and the number is correct, you'll get full credit. Ellie. I'm showing you the one the absolute value of It's really simple. If you want to find by what amount a part of this position has changed, you integrate the velocity. If you want to know the total distance the particle travels, you don't want to worry about positives and negatives. You just want to know how far it went. That's why you're integrating the speed. Speed is the absolute value of the velocity. So that's, but keep those straight. It's easy to lose points if you get them mixed up. Question? Can you say what you just said? So I want to find how much some part of the position changes, like how different is the new position from the old position, that's an interval of velocity to find the change in the part of the position. If I want to find the total distance traveled, I don't want any negatives. I just want to know how far did the part go in total, that's why you're integrating the speed. Thank you. You're welcome, anytime. Treat for Lindsay, anybody else? Please. Next one. So look at problem five now in the blue. Mm -hmm. Look at number five. Okay. Number five says, is the level of oil in the tank rising or falling at time equals six? I guarantee you it's just a common sense question. It's not like some complicated idea. It's just think about what rates mean, think about what they've given you, and I'm sure someone in the room can raise their hand and tell everyone else like how you would figure out whether the level in the tank's going up or going down at time equals six. Sarah, please. Um, would you just look at the graph and then see if the first equation, which is how fast it's going up, You're doing great, Sarah. Hold on. So go one, two, three, four, five, six. So here's the time we're interested in. And Sarah correctly said, I, I examined that time. And she notes that the blue is the input rate, and the red is the output rate. So which one is higher, Sarah? So that if you were looking at the tank, you'd see oil flowing in, you'd see oil flowing out. Sarah, which stream, the stream coming in or the stream coming out would appear stronger, like higher? Stream going out. It's going to cause the level to go down. One or two, if that makes perfect sense. One, one or two, if that makes perfect sense. One or two, if that makes perfect sense. Check everybody real quick. Two points for the room. So Sarah? Three points. All we have to do now is find a way to write it correctly so the grader will give you credit. Here's the best way I've found, easiest, quickest. Uh, again, they don't accept, as I said to Chad, they won't take guesses. So if you just guess and say, oh, I think the input rate's higher than the output. You don't say, I think. You just, you're all coy about it. The input rate is higher than the output rate. Therefore, they're not going to give you points. We've got to have some evidence. So we need evidence. So we need to find the exact rate in which oil flows in. So what you just say like R is six equals Nicely done. It's perfect, Sarah. So go back to the calculator. On the main screen, let's see, my input rate is Y1. So all I have to do is type Y1. Enter parenthesis at time equals six. And note what that is. 5.395. I write that down so the grader knows I have evidence. So I'm just making guesses. So on your paper, you write H of 6. So 
Somebody did it on their calculator just straight your hand, I'll pay you. What was that number again? Go here, Deborah. Uh, and Deborah, what would the units be? Uh, Not quite. This one's a rate. So this is yeah, six, yeah my bad, sorry. Three points for Deborah. Questions? Then as Sarah said, you go find R of six. Similarly on your calculator, somebody raise your hand and tell me what you got. So you're Sydney. 8.319 units, Sydney. You would need help with that. Perfect. Uh, now you just need a statement, Sarah. We basically can say what you said, but here's a nice, concise way to say it. Uh, since um, R of 6 is greater than H of 6, the level of well, so getting back to Sydney's comment, I've got to be specific. So I say since R of 6 is greater than H of 6, the oil level is falling. You could say dropping, going down, whatever, decreasing. The level is falling at time equals six. And that's hours, so. Please, Jim. So, I just have a question on how I wrote it. Uh -huh. Please. Where to find that the level of the heating oil is falling to the nature of six minus the R of six is less than zero. Yeah, that's okay. Let me take it. Please. And I have another question. Go. So when I first looked at this question, I like started thinking through it wrong. I thought of doing the integral of h from the time period zero to six and minus the integral of r from the time period zero to six, and then minusing those two to eight to six minus r of six. But that would come up with how much the oil changes, how much the oil level has changed. Total in the time of the right? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, listen, 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 listen. Three take the tape. It's perfect. So doing the integrals doesn't tell you what's happening at a moment. Listen close. Integrals are over time. So you're not going to use an integral ever to figure out, well, you gotta be careful now, but integrals are over time, okay? So you're finding what's happening over time, not really what's happening at an instant in time. All we have to do is compare the rates to find out what's happening at that instant. Very good. Anybody else? Cool, let's go to the next one. Six. Now this is more like what you did, Chance. They want to know in total how much oil is in the tank at 12 hours. Um, Chance already got a bunch of tickets. Somebody tell me what can I start doing to figure out how much oil. It's just common sense, go. Or you want to find like the integral of how much is going in and then the integral of how much is going out. Nicely done. So I write on my paper, if I integrate from 0 to 12, uh, h of t, I've already done this one. Uh, remind me, Chad, what's the number for the 70 dollars Cool. And one thing with the units, if you don't want to write units along the way, you don't have to. It's just they do check it periodically, Paris, on the last answer to see if you have units for the final result. So along the way, if you don't want to write units, you don't have to. Um, but this really is gallons. That's how much oil flowed in during the 12 hours. Three for chat. Somebody build on his thing. Where's he headed? Ellie? And then would you subtract the integral of the R of 6 from the time period zero to 6? Over what time period? Zero to 12. So I go 0 to 12, R of T. Three points for Ellie. Someone else you've got that on their calculator. Tell me the value to write down, Brady. 73.545. 73.545 gallons again. And then Ellie says, if you subtract, so this is how much flowed in, this is how much flowed out. So the difference is how much the oil level changed. One or two, if that makes sense. The difference between those two is simply the, how much the oil level changed during the 12 hour period. One second, Ty, sorry. Two points, go Ty. Would you have to write what those two equations were equal? Like you were able to do it, just like the first, like in the door, H of T and B of T minus the R of T. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Let me finish this one, then I'll erase it and write it another way. Okay. Perfect, perfect. Sarah? Three um, So then do you just. 
No worries. Let's go, baby. So do you have to find one of the started it? Perfect. So now you write down this. You say, I started with 125, the total staff. I add to that the amount that flowed in. Subtract to that the amount that flowed out. And hey, caution, everybody, look. The rule of the AP test is that if you do intermediate computations, you must store those values. On an 84 calculator or an Inspire, uh, in this case, you didn't really need to store them. You could have also done this. Watch me. So here I am on the main screen. I've already found the integral of H of T. So I go find the R of T integral. So it's in math 9. Uh, it's here at 12. R of T is in Y2. So DX. Press enter. Are you with me? I now do what Bailey said. I type 125. That's how much I had to begin with. I add to that the amount that flowed in during the 12 hours. I just go grab it. Like so. You see that? Please, so if you do that, you don't need a star? Yeah, here's why, Annika. The calculator is displaying 70.571, but internally it's storing the value for you. So without you pressing the store key, it's stored it. Okay. So it's got all of its decimals internally. Okay. So when I bring it down here, it's only saying three, but it really is a whole bunch. And then I can just say minus, and that's your question. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So then I come up here and hit enter again. Same thing, I'm getting the stored value. Now I know I won't have a mistake in the final line. Never. Before. Anytime you, the general rule is if you use a computation later, you want to make sure you use the stored value. But like before you said we had to call it right, you're like three for it. Is that just so that you don't have to write out the value? That was really for you. Okay. So that you don't have to write it out again. Just making sure that we get Correct. They're not, they're not going to grade it. No, they really aren't. So that was just trying to help you develop a good habit. Okay. But you're correct, you're like three tickets. Never as well. Everybody else? Awesome. So back on the sheet here, I did all of this. I just say equals. Uh, so we put three equals in them. I'll go three. 122. And I want to make sure I get units. So what are the units here? Gallons. Gallons in this case because I'm finding the level of the oil. Okay. So we look at the scoring guide for that problem. Uh, nice, three points. So in my test, that would have been nine points. You get one point if you have the correct limits for your integral. So you literally get a point if you wrote zero and 12 on your integral. They did it as one integral where the two things subtract within, totally legal, either way. It's like derivatives, uh, Ty. The integral of two things being subtracted is equivalent to two integrals being subtracted. So you do it either way. Second point into grand. As long as you are correctly integrating h of t as a positive value, r of t as a negative, you're good there. And then you have the correct answers. Other questions? Please, Kelsey. So if you did it in one integral, you wouldn't have to store anything, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Totally legal. Just so make sure you write, as you saw in the scoring guide, make sure you write down the integrals. You, would you want to write both down? Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Like how I showed like, here is, yeah. is fine. Yeah. Or you can do it how they showed in the story. I got like one big integral. Either way. There you go. Okay, turn the page to the next one. One more example before we quit today. Uh, go to number nine, actually. Go to number nine. Okay, you've already told me how to solve number nine. We've already talked about it. Um, this problem says that you have an island, and on that island, some scientist is trying to keep track of mosquito population. Okay, so he comes up with a, they come up with interesting problems. Interesting being somewhat of a sarcastic term. Okay, so they have a, a, a formula for the rate. Look at me. Look at me. Don't mix this up. This is not the number of mosquitoes. It's the rate. It's how fast the mosquito population changes at any moment in time. They said, are the number of mosquitoes going up or down at time equals six? So someone last period said, hey, that's not so bad. 
let's just take this formula that finds the rate at any time, and let's plug in 6. Let's see what we get. So when they did, they got this number. So because it's a positive value, you know that the number of mosquitoes is going up on that day. Okay, one or two, if that makes sense. Points that are cool. Okay, look at number 10. We've got two minutes. Number 10. Number 10 wants to know is this rate itself? Remember, this is a rate. They want to know if this is increasing or decreasing at time equals 6. Okay, so, what I want you to do right now is I want you reading the problem and listening to my words and see if it makes sense to you. So, read the problem to yourself. Read the problem, it's only two lines. Make sense of that. And listen to my comment. My comment is that problem number 10 is simply asking you to figure out this is already a rate. It's mosquitoes per day, like meters per second. It's a rate. They want you to figure out is this rate going up or is this rate going down? We already know it's an increasing rate, but is this rate itself going up or down? One or two if you understand what they're asking. They want to know if the rate itself is increasing or decreasing. It's down at this chart. If you want to know if a rate itself is going up or down, increasing or decreasing, you need to find the rate at which this changes. We need R prime. So we type in R prime of 6. Write this down. You can find R prime of 6 on your calculator by taking the derivative of this. Okay? How to do that? Go back here. I'm going to run out of room time here. So I go back to my y equals, my mosquito problem is down here. Oh, up. Um, you basically find that rate. Okay, if this turns out to be a negative number, that means it's, it's just like velocity and acceleration. If this is negative, it's going to cause this to become less positive. Therefore, the number of mosquitoes will be increasing at a rate that is decreasing. If it's a positive number, the number of students will be increasing at a rate that is increasing. Finally, Craig here. Can you please come to the May office?